how do you uh, how do you prefer to have a configuration of a writing session? Again, all, all these things depend on artists. Do you do you like? Oh man, one, such a good question. One on one. <laughs> do you like a third in the room? Do you love? Do you like? I love a six person. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I more people there. Are, I guess, yeah. But. <laughs> no, I mean, there's definitely like there's definitely some kind of you know. Uh, boundaries to all this it's really interesting be this is a really interesting question because so i have this like term that i use like with like people who are like professional like songwriters versus producers there's a difference with when they enter the room there's a different different energy that they can bring because of the vastness that a producer can do at any moment so i could go play a keyboard i could just pretend like I'm Rick Rubin and say nothing. I could just start chiming in on rhyming patterns. There's this kind of thing where if you're coming in as a songwriter, it's very specific. Yeah. And there's a certain like element of that that is this, I am here to write a song where you can almost be a little bit confused as to why everyone's there if it's just a producer and an artist. You could just be there to make sounds. I mean, there's actually nothing wrong with that. That artist could be down to just, hey, can we just do tracks today? You know, you know, so... But when a person shows up whose who's expertise is um, songwriting and getting a song. They're a top liner. A top they're liner. a top liner. I consider them like a song. I call them song moms and dads. Mm. And it's like the adult is in the room. And it's it's there's no real way for them to escape that title because they can't just tinker and play around like you know, there's just this ability to yes. always be a little bit more childlike as a producer. That you can't just be like, I want to say blah, blah, blah. Like it just, there's always this kind of, and that is such an amazing thing to have when you're trying to crank out a song in a day is to have yeah. like an adult in the room is, and they can be like 20 years old. It has nothing to do. It's just that their mentality is so, it's so specific. Like why they exist in that room isn't nuanced where like yeah. you could have yep. 17 producers in a room and what are we all doing here? I don't know. We're gonna la we're gonna link up all our laptops and play beat battles. You know, like you know, you don't know. Like you <laughs> that know. sounds awesome. Let's do <laughs> like it. we're just gonna sit in here and talk about plugins all day. And you're like, okay, that's fine. But if you got 17 songwriters in the room, they're like, oh, there's 16 too many of us, or there's 15 too many. Of us. Like it's so clear how many songwriters, top liners are needed, and and I think that uh, the that the tightness of that description, like the fact that it's in, like baked into their job is such a specific type of job that they creates this kind of adult in the room energy. And I love having that around, but it's also something you want to be very careful about because sometimes you do want to just like jam and just kind of like allow for things to just go wherever they might go. And I'm not saying that a top liner can't be a part of something just jamming and going where it's going. I'm just saying that traditionally in, if that started to happen, it would feel like they were being left out of the, you know, why they were there for that day. Because normally, 99% of the time, they're there to help craft lyrics and melodies. And if that's not happening, where if that's not happening and I'm there, I'm like, this is awesome. I'm like reversing, you know, uh, this, you know, this weird drum break you know what i mean love just reversing like, shit as do i <laughs> <laughs> so it's just you're just like so i think that in that way the configuration kind of a long story short i don't have a favorite or unfavorite one but i'm just very knowledge i'm just very sensitive to the fact that when you start including top liners it is for the purpose of writing a song that day so get the song you know where if one's not around maybe you hear what the artist has been jamming on themselves. Maybe you, maybe that gives them more space to be vulnerable because there's also an implication that when you have a songwriter in the room, it means the artist is wanting help, which can't, again, you can't look away from that. Yeah. You know? So what does that, what does that mean? And how does that hit the artist? I mean, it doesn't have to mean anything, but it does present a potential of meaning something. So, yeah. And the, the other layer to talk about, uh, I agree with everything you just said. I, the 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 other layer to talk about is top liners that have relationships already with either you know. There's a lot of people that that top liners that will come in combos that um, you know like one of if you're if you're writing with an artist 
oftentimes it's like this artist loves this person and yeah, they have 100% very lot. common and yeah. and they they write they write lyrics together and that's sort of advice for a lot of people who are just songwriters it's like the relationship with the artists is really paramount and there's people that you know are so good at that you know my 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 favorite recent uh uh my my new friend Liz Rose, who I, I spent time with in Bali, who obviously you know is known from the the first Taylor yeah. Swift album and has done a million amazing things. Like hanging out with her, she is she's a top liner who gets in the room. She just sets to such a like. I've worked with her. It's you know, crazy. She's yeah. Such a comfortable, sweet vibe, and she talks to the artist for twenty minutes, and you're just talking about your life, and all of a sudden she's like. Hey, that thing you said, here's mm -hmm. the lyric and here's the idea. And then all of a sudden you have a song title and a concept that came straight from the artist. And it's just from, it's like artist whispering or something that that's a particular kind, of, particular kind of thing. And then there's the other side of it, which is the like personality singer top liner that comes in and is like, here's, here's my amazing vocal. I'm going to sing you a thing. And the artist kind of goes with it and maybe they copy it and maybe the artist is a writer and they do it together or maybe the artist is more kind of waiting for this artist personality top liner to lead them there's sort of a few ways to do it but the re the, the type of relationship that the top liner has with the artist with the producer or whatever adds a adds a layer of complexity that can be really really interesting and the, i'd say the best people the best top liners um if they're not writing for pitch the best top liners are the people that come in and just like whisper the artist into being vulnerable and you know getting the best out of them in a way that a producer does a lot of times but they have a more like you said it's a more specific tool like a lyrical emotional vocal thing yeah and it's what they're it's what they're like you know when they show up to christmas dinner it's what they say they do for a living and so their brain is it's it's constantly refining what that job is and it's you know so for a producer i you know i can just get just you know they're it's just not a skill that i sit in refine and i just like i i so i love having those people come in but you said something really interesting because i think there's two angles when it comes to top liners there's top liners that have a relationship with the artist and then there's top liners that you recommend as a producer both of which are very common situations but very different if you recommend a, a top liner for a session to an artist you're like you know that's i, I can't i can't really put words in, but that's the thing you're you're entering into a certain kind of uh uh like i think this person's going to make you better and i think that that's you know should be considered differently than when an artist says i like bringing this person around because an artist likes bringing a person around normally you're just like great love you to bring your person that's great because i and i i have a rule i will say my only kind of rule that i have is i don't like two new things at once so if it's mm -hmm. so if it's a new artist then i'm not going to do a new top liner um and and i need to have a very strong relationship with the artist to bring in a new top liner or i have to have a very strong relationship with the top liner to be in with a new artist i don't like yeah. two two like I, I have a rule with like when I'm producing things, I always, I always say one thing at a time. And that's just because I'm too stupid to keep track of multiple things. And like, and it's just like in my brain just overloads. So if I've got two new personalities, I mean, I'm toast instantly. Yeah. I'm just too, I'm just too like, uh, does this person like them? Do they like me? <laughs> like, do they like each other? Okay. I can't focus on what I guess that my job is. And, and again, but like Liz Rose, it's like when you're in a room with someone like you're, like the last thing you should be worried about is you know drum tones of this and that just get the song and maybe get the vocals and then go to town on the production you know so yeah and if you have good prep you'll have a good uh sonic palette for it and all that kind of stuff as well I, yeah i i would i don't know if i give, if I want to give lots of specific recommendations but i actually recommend that if people are starting out just do all of it because some people thrive, I, I, allegedly people thrive on the like multiple, oh yeah, the, the anxiety of multiple people in big sessions. I've never had great experience with that. I've probably done between forty and sixty like four plus person sessions. I don't think I've with ever an artist. A good song. Sometimes it's an artist, and well, sometimes it's a, two, like because I've done that with writing camps. Yeah, exactly. And, that happens. And, and I also, met a lot of people that way. That's why that's awesome. You meet yes, a lot of friends yes. and you're like, this is awesome. 
we'll do a real song one day. <laughs> totally. I've, I've had that as well. I've definitely had artists who either they don't really write or nobody thinks they can write yet. Cause that's an interesting thing too, is you get in like young pop artists that it's, maybe comes from some sort of other fame, influencer, actor, whatever, that sort of thing. And the assumption is they can't write at all. Sometimes that's very true. Or at least what I find is they have ideas, but no one has no one has figured out how to cultivate those ideas and they haven't written hundreds of songs, but there is something there. And often I've had a session with that kind of person and then two other top liners because for some reason people think we need two and then me. And those sessions are like, it's almost like you need to like separate people and like move people out of the way sometimes. <laughs> or like there's the singer of the band and the guitar player of the band and the guitar player is good at playing guitar, but has lots of lyric ideas that sort of overwhelming a momentum that's happening here. And you got to kind of like adjust things. And there's, there's, there's a lot of that kind of stuff that happens, but I honestly just think everybody needs to go through that and try those things. You know, the, the percentage what do you think the percentage over the course of your career, the percentage of songwriting sessions that have yielded a great song? Like what, what percentage of the time is it? I think we talked about this a little bit. It's like the yeah. batting average. I think, yeah, you don't have a ton, but I mean, just for me in my career, most of the stuff that is like clicked and connected is just like pretty, pretty solid relationships. And definitely people like me being like, pretty comfortable and in in that situation that you just described of the guitarist that's really like really like bringing up some stuff that like make my eye twitch a little bit and and i think that it, like i think starting out do everything you can because it's just again this then nothing is objective but for me i know i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna just be like i can't wait for this to be over and go have a nice you know breakfast burrito for dinner but like for now i'm just gonna not do i'm not gonna try too hard because this isn't my zone like I can't that guitarist is you know or whatever that person is is yeah. saying lyrics that I know aren't good and I don't have necessarily better ones but I just have that instinct and it just feels I've tried to you know oh let me massage and put the jello in the clay and let's put it all together and I just like it just is like too too much of a losing battle in my opinion that some some days you're yeah. just better off just you know yeah, like going and watching Avatar 2. Thanks for watching. Just a reminder, all of this content is free. There's no secret knowledge here. There's no Patreon. We don't read ads. We don't have sponsors. We're just trying to build a knowledge base. All that we ask in return is that you share it with somebody. Thanks so much.